Hi guys, welcome back to another video. So in this video, we'll be studying about sequence alignment methods under computational biology. So let's get started with this. Talking about sequence alignment, so there are a couple of methods that we'll be focusing in this video under which sequence alignment is based on. So talking about sequence uh, determination, so structure is equivalent to function. So definitely a structure represents something that is related to certain functions. Also, similarity in the sequences has two aspects. One is quantitative and one is qualitative. Also, an alignment is a mutual arrangement of two sequences, which is a sort of qualitative answer. It exhibits where the sequences are similar and where they differ. So we'll talk about these sequences, which are global and local alignment. So before moving to that, we'll talk about the biological motivation of sequence comparison. So talking about this, it's, it basically includes storing, retrieving, and comparing DNA strings, all right? It can be amino acids as well as DNA strings. Also, it comparing two or more strings to find related proteins. Also, exploring frequently occurring patterns uh, of nucleotides and finding informative elements in protein and DNA. And identifying an unknown sequence finding and, and also finding other members of multi gene families so basically these are some of the utilities that we look to uh, when we are uh, doing an alignment or we are whenever we are focusing on any sort of alignment whatever we look to and whatever we explore to find so moving on with so there are some of the uh, functions that uh, we must look into whenever we are studying alignment. So there are insertions, deletions, and substitutions. So insertion is simple as an insertion of a letter or several letters to the sequence. And deletion is deletion of a letter in the sequence and replace. Uh, replacing is called substitution by one another. So talking about percent sequence identity. All right. So before just moving into the grid of uh, alignment theories, this just get started with basic things so that we understand each and every segment of this properly. So this the extent to which two nucleotide or amino acid sequences are invariant. So this is one sequence and this is the second sequence. Let's say these are two sequences. So we need to find firstly the alignment score. So what is the alignment of the score? So how do we determine this? So we determine with the help of person sequence identity. All right. So in this, we basically count the number of similar sequences and the dissimilar sequences and also the gap sequences. All right. So this is one uh, similar sequence this is another. This is a dissimilar or unsimilar sequence. It's also, also called a mismatch. All right. This is a match. This is a match. This is a mismatch. Whereas this is a match, this is a match, and this is a gap. We also count the gap score in this. So I'll be explaining in the coming uh, slide how to calculate all of these. So just look into this. So this is a match again. This is a gap. As we see, this is a match, and again, this is a match. All right. So let's do this. So there are four major ways. All right. So in the previous, as you saw, there are two sequences. So we can find. Uh, the alignment score with the help of number of matches, dismatches, and gaps. Also, so there are other four major ways to find the alignment score. So that two sequences were a very basic one. In these four major ways, such as global, local, and free space alignment, gap entity, we can add multiple sequences and find its gap score or sequence score. All right. So moving on. So. Let's say I just input a question that says two strings roughly this if two strings are roughly the same length. So what is the maximum similarity or the minimum difference between the two, two sequence? So coming to global alignment is done across. So coming to talking about the first sequence, which is the global alignment. All right. So global alignment is done across the entire sequence length to include as many matches as possible up to end, including sequence end. All right. So we stay the entire sequence, not into a, not uh, deferring to in, any internal sequences in global alignment. So we just take the entire sequence length and to include as many matches as possible up to end, including sequence end. So 
talking about this again a question such as the two string of sequences so what is the maximum uh, similarity between a substring of two sequences so what are the most similar substrings so this is an important question and herein comes the local alignment all right so let's say a two string of sequences are present here these are two sequences so what is the maximum similarity in between a substring of two sequences so let's say this part so what is the similarity uh, numbered order what is the similarity difference or minimum difference between the substring of two sequences and what are the most similar substrings so herein comes the local alignment where we look inside a particular sequence whereas we don't consider uh, the uh, entire whereas we consider the entire sequence in global alignment whereas we don't consider the local uh, the entire sequence in local alignment whereas we consider only a part of substring of a sequence so moving on so let's say another question comes here the two strings are of different length so what is the maximum similarity between substrings so herein comes the end free uh, end free space alignment so given that at least one of these substrings must be a prefix of the original substring and one must be a suffix all right so given that at least one of these substrings must be a prefix a prefix means uh, it should be matching with the previous one of the original string and one must be a suffix of the next one all right so this is end free space alignment this is not a very popular alignment method that we use the most popular ones are global and local alignment so i'll make a separate video to explain what is global and uh, local alignment because it's a uh, diverse topic and it's like uh, pretty much to understand whereas end free space just so you can remember if the two strings are of different length then we use end free space alignment so talking about gap penalty so the string uh, let's say the string of are of different lengths so what is the similarity between two strings given a weight function or gaps depending on their lengths so gap penalties generally use the c matching c dna matching and represents the mutation so gaps are generally generated due to mutations definitely so over a period of time cells mutate genes mutate so that these forms gap at certain places so these are gap penalties so which will which is very important while doing local and global alignment all right so i'll be explaining each one of them so stay tuned so uh, talking about affine gap penalties so as you can see these are this is one sequence this is second sequence so there are two gaps present one is this one is this so in nature a series of k in uh, indels of often come as a single even rather than series of k single nuclear even so leaving this k indels this is a complex thing so let's talk about this one so uh this is more likely this is like likely so why is it that so normal scoring would be could give the same score for both alignment cause there are two gaps so gap score is same for both that means and there are two gaps as well so gap score is same whereas the matching and mismatching score is also the same so the uh, scoring pattern are the same score for it will result in score, same score for both alignments whereas this is uh, more likely this is less likely so basically like uh, the gaps are present at events at continuous events caused due to mutations whereas it does not happen at odd intervals so as you can see it, this is a gap at here and this is a gap, another gap at here all right so this is this is the more most likely that we find we find uh, mutations uh, repetitively not at odd intervals all right so moving on forward so talking about pairwise versus multiple alignments so this is the sequence comparison as you can see so this is the sequence comparison this is a single sequence this is a basic single sequence this is a pairwise sequence all right so pairwise sequence include just two sequences this is the first sequence this is the second sequence multiple sequences includes lots of sequences all right so there are techniques for using multiple alignments as well so we just uh, we focused on multiple uh, pairwise alignments such as global and local alignment we'll talk about multiple alignments in late later but definitely we'll be covering it uh, in full expl uh, explanatory way so moving on so pairs so we're talking about pairwise alignment so the purpose of an alignment is to line up all the residues that were derived from the same residue point in the ancestral gene or the proteins in two sequences 
so basically we like as you can see from the definition so it's basically derived from the same uh, residue po uh, position in the ancestral gene or protein sequence these are two sequences that are derived from this so we have to just align them so that we'd get a, uh, a sequence score all right so with the help of global and so the purpose of an alignment is to line up all these residues as you can see there's a gap is shown here like this so you have to just align with the help of global and local alignment so talking about the next part which is the dynamic programming so what it is all about so talking about this this uh, basically it compares two sequences and generates an alignment so talking about this sequence this sequence so we will compare two sequences with the help of local and global alignment so i hope i guess you won't be able to make out make it out what is global and local alignment now but i will making another video for this so don't worry about so basically we like align the two sequences like this so we generate alignment so alignment contains matches mismatches scatter as well as gaps this is very obvious and it can be used for both local which was given by smith waterman and global which was given by Needleman Wunsch alignments and also it generates an alignment score so that significance of or optimal alignment can be found so the gap score so all of the alignment score which uh, which is found after aligning these two sequences gives us an optimal alignment score all right also it depends on the choice of scoring system so scoring system uh, means that uh, there is a uh, different scores for gap mismatches and matches so it depends basically very much depends on these scoring scores so it can be if the, if the scoring scores are wrongly given so we won't be able to find the optimal alignment so if the scoring scores are given rightly so we will definitely find a optimal alignment moving on with this so we'll continue with the global alignment this thing in my next video so that's it from my video stay tuned for more